Hey guys, want to build a robot? Matt here from ACVR, and today's video is all about adding Bluetooth to your project. Now, in the past, especially in a classroom setting, um, getting all the robots to work with Bluetooth was a little bit challenging. And so, uh, thanks to some recent advancements, not only in Bluetooth modules, but also uh, you know, smartphone-based apps to control Arduino projects, um, it's become really, really easy. And so, uh, I wanted to make this video to get anyone started with using Bluetooth with their robotics projects. You know, whenever I have some students and they're learning how to program Arduino and motor controllers and drive their robots around, one of the first things they ask me is how to make it wireless. And so Bluetooth is one of the easiest ways to do that. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you my favorite Bluetooth app, um, how to connect it to an Arduino, as well as uh, some example code to get you started. So by the end of this video, you will be a Bluetooth expert and be uh, able to make all kinds of cool wireless projects. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so our first step in getting Bluetooth connected to our Arduino for some awesome wireless projects, we'll be talking about the wireless module itself. So in this example here, I've got an HM10. Uh, now, I've seen these referenced as uh, AT09s, even uh, CC2540s in the past. And as far as I can tell, I haven't seen any compatibility issues in terms of using iOS or Android um, in those three modules here. So in this case, I've got my HM10 here. And it is an awesome little chip. So in this case, one of the biggest features is, is its compatibility with BLE 4.0. Um, and so that means that versus older Bluetooth modules and older uh, Bluetooth protocols, we have uh, increased range um, and some other features that make this really, really, really useful. Uh, and so the pins on this uh, HM10 are really, really straightforward. So in this case, we're going to worry about VCC, ground, TX, and RX. Uh, TX being transmit, RX being receive. And so we only need four wires to connect this to our microcontroller, which makes this really, really, really easy too. So in this example, I'm going to be using this RF Nano. I, I love these little guys. These are my favorite microcontrollers by far. Uh, they have the uh, micro USB and the NRF24 L01 radio built in. So in this example, you could consider this a regular Arduino Nano. You know, we're not using the radio. Uh, in this tutorial, and there's no uh, compatibility issues in terms of plugging in this, uh, this BLE module. Um, but also, a regular Arduino Uno or really anything else in the Arduino family is fully compatible. And so, you can use this tutorial and the same pins for anything Arduino based, and it'll, it'll work the exact same way. Um, but before we move on, I also wanted to take a second to talk about the ESP32. So I love the ESP32. It is such an awesome chip. You know, it comes in all different sizes and shapes and such. Um, but in this case, uh, the app that I'm gonna show you guys how to use today is actually fully compatible uh, with the ESP32. So the Arduino, you know, you need to have the HM10 to have that communication, but the ESP32 has Wi-Fi, but also BLE built in which means the same app that I'm gonna show you guys how to use, you can run on the ESP32, um, which is really, really easy. Now for this tutorial, uh, I'm gonna focus on using the Arduino and I'll have a whole other tutorial for the uh, ESP, ESP32 later. Um, but I just wanted to mention that it is possible because it is really, really, really useful. So the first step in getting Bluetooth working, right? Getting our, our smartphone talking to our Arduino is gonna be wiring this sucker up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a second little mini breadboard here. And I'm gonna plug those same four pins in that we talked about before. So in this case, I have VCC, ground, TX, and RX. So I'm using my red wire for VCC, I've got my black wire for ground, TX, I have my green wire right here, and RX, I have my yellow wire right here. So uh, in the past, you may have used the actual RX and TX pins on your Arduino to get these uh, Bluetooth modules uh, communicating, but in this case, we're gonna be using the software serial library, and so we can use any, well not any digital pin, we can use um, a digital pin instead of those RX and TX pins. And so here I've got my VCC line going to five volts, uh, one thing that's cool about this module as well is that um, it's completely five volt tolerant and so you don't have to worry about frying it or uh, using a logic level converter or anything like that. Um, okay, so that brings us to RX and TX. So again, we have VCC going to five volts. We have our ground pin connected to uh, any of the grounds on our Arduino. And so 
it is time to connect the TX pin. So in this case, TX, we're gonna use D2. And again, we're using the software serial uh, library in our uh, example here that's gonna make this really, really easy. So the last thing we need to do is wire up RX to pin three. So here we can see I've got RX with my yellow wire going to D3. I've got TX, my green wire, going to D2, VCC going to five volts, and ground going to ground. And so in terms of the wiring, that's it. Um, so it's really straightforward and pretty easy. Uh, the next step is showing you guys the app we're gonna be using, um, how to connect it to your Arduino, and then we'll go over the Arduino code um, and talk about some practical examples. So the first step is done, and now we're gonna move on to the actual app itself. All right, so the app we're going to be using for our project today is called Dabble. Um, and I chose this app for a couple reasons. For one, it's available on iOS and Android, um, so anybody can use it. Um, it's also free, and that's a huge, huge plus. Um, and uh, the final reason I wanted to use this is because of its compatibility with ESP32. Um, I think that's so cool. So this is a really, really powerful app. Um, right now I'm recording this on iOS. Um, and there are less features that look like they're uh, released yet. Um, I, I'm, I'm guessing they're under development right now. But if you were to look at this from the Android side, uh, you'd see that some of these other features are currently available. Uh, but for right now, what we're going to focus on is the gamepad. So before we do that, we need to connect our uh, Bluetooth module. And so that is really straightforward. So if you look in the uh, upper right hand corner, there are these electrical plugs and they're next to the uh, settings button. So if you click on this right here, you're going to see some things pop up. And so what we want right now is BT05. Click on that connect button and you are Good. Uh, it's only going to take a few seconds to connect. Um, it's it, it's kind of tricky if you're doing this in a classroom environment. Um, one thing I really like about the Android version is that it shows all of the MAC addresses of each Bluetooth uh, device, and so that makes it really easy to find the the uh, the receive that you're trying to connect to. But other than that, it's really really easy. Um, it's also easy to reconnect to your last previous device. And so if you are say in a classroom and you have lots of stuff going on, um, it's not hard to. Uh, to uh, figure out which module you're trying to connect to. Uh, and so, like I said before, for this example, we're gonna focus on the gamepad. Um, what I like about the gamepad here is it allows us to use some digital buttons um, and uh, get some cool uh, input for our Arduino to use. Um, also, it's it's pretty easy format to use to control a robot. Um, but more so than that, there's a couple added features here. So if you press on these uh, two little squares in the upper right-hand corner, you can actually switch to having a joystick or using the accelerometer in your phone, um, which is pretty cool. And so you can make uh, gyroscope controlled projects. Um, I'm not gonna get into that this time, but it is a really cool uh, feature to have. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do is start with digital mode and get to uh, being able to see this data whenever we push these buttons and then start to put that data to work. Um, so our next step is actually gonna be looking at the Arduino code that will allow us to do just that. All right, so here we have some example code that I wrote um, using the uh, gamepad uh, example for the Dabble library. Uh, and so all I did was clean the code up a little bit uh, and try to make it as clear as possible about uh, how to use the gamepad to drive around a robot. So um, I used the uh, ACBR Rover, right, as my example. And so this code is specific to that. That being said, if you have a robot, say, using the L298, um, as opposed to the L293D, uh, the code would be the exact same. And also, if you have another robot that uses a different motor driver, um, if you wanted to uh, use this uh, example code, all you need to do is swap out my motor driver code for yours. So here we have, if the game, if the game pad up button is pressed, we have forward, and so this is forward for my robot. But if, if you know the code to drive your robot forward, all you have to do is swap that out. And so, um, I just wanted to make this as super, super simple as possible. So, um, like I said, I used the gamepad example uh, from the Dabble library, and uh, I'll be sure to link this code as well as the Dabble library um, in the blog post. And um, I'm planning on going on way, uh, way, way more detail on that blog post uh, than I am right here. And so if you're looking for more information, feel free to head over there. Uh, I'll have some wiring diagrams and some other helpful stuff. And so 
Um, one thing I want to say though before we get started is I, I have noticed some incompatibility with older versions of Arduino and the Davil library. Uh, and this has to do with their naming convention. So in the examples, if you download the, lib the Davil library straight from them, um, there's a 1.2.3. in their examples. And that's an invalid uh, file name for older versions of Arduino. So, so um, if, you're, if you're past 1.8.10, it shouldn't be a big deal. So if you download the library file and uh, you get a bunch of errors, just update Arduino. Um, I'm running 1.8.11 right now. I think 1.8.12 is the newest one, but I'm not sure about that. Um, but the code here is pretty straightforward. So uh, because I'm using the ACBR rover, I have my enable pins for my right motor and my left motor uh, hardwired into pins three and six, my PWM pins. Um, and so my direction, variables, my input A, input B for right are hardwired into pins four and five. And I have my input variables uh, A and B for my left side hardwired into seven and eight. Um, and if, if you're looking for more uh, detail about how to build the rover or how the rover works, I have other videos about that. Um, so feel free to check those out if you're curious about it. Um, it's definitely a fun little robot. Um, it's a really good way to get started making some really fun robotics projects. Um, okay, as always, they are all declared as outputs because we're sending data out to our motor driver. Um, keep in mind, the serial uh, baud rate is not 9600 for our serial monitor, so you're going to have to change the baud rate for the uh, serial monitor, otherwise you get a bunch of gibberish. Um, so uh, keep that in mind, right? If you see a bunch of craziness when you open up that serial monitor, um, that's what's going on. Uh, okay, so this is a really important method. So the process input method, um, you have your Davil object processing the input. This is really important. So you have to make sure you have this. Um, other than that, what's what I like about the library file is that the methods they have is up pressed is really straightforward. It's pretty obvious that this method happens whenever you press the up button. And so I have these serial print statements in here that really aren't needed. Um, but I just have this in here so that um, my students can see we have forward, backward, left, and right. Um, and so it's pretty straightforward. So if you follow the first steps, so you, you wired up the, uh, the uh, Bluetooth module to your Arduino, you've installed the Dabble app, uh, you've connected it, and you've paired your devices, and you have uploaded this code, then all you have to do is open up the serial monitor to see if it's working. So. For those of you guys who may not know, we have the serial monitor. It's this little magnifying glass in the upper uh, right-hand corner here. And so if we were to click on the serial monitor, making sure that we set the baud rate uh, to 250,000, we should see it saying stopped. Uh, so if you don't see anything at all, then there could be an issue. Uh, you may want to check your wiring, but we see stopped. And then if I press the uh, up button, it says forward. I press the back button, it says backward. I press the left button, it says left. I press the right button, it says right. So if we see those words changing on the screen, then we know we are good to go. So rather than just seeing the words on the uh, serial monitor, we want to put this stuff to work, right? We want to use this data to actually drive around our robot. Uh, and so that'll be our next step that we have right here. Um, so if you haven't already, go ahead and upload this code to whatever uh, robot you're trying to control with the Bluetooth, and we will go from there. Um, also, I want to say, keep in mind that you can, you can use this Bluetooth stuff for so, so many other things than just driving around robots. Um, that's what I'm focusing on in this video, um, but keep in mind it's a really fun uh, protocol to mess with. So before, or once you get this project done and you're happy with it, I highly recommend checking out some of the other modules they have, because um, it's, a, it's a cool little app. Um, okay, that's enough of that though. Let's go ahead and let's uh, wire up our Bluetooth module to our robot so we can get this thing rolling. All right, so now that we know that the communication between our phone and the Arduino is all set, it is time to put that data to work. So rather than just view the words through the serial monitor, we wanna use those words and use the commands uh, to drive around our robot. So I've got here the ACVR rover, and so the code that we have for the example, that will work with any robot ever, so long as you put your motor driver code exactly where we put our motor driver code. Um, if you've got one of the ACVR rovers, this is really straightforward. Um, if you're using, say, an L298, the code 
would work the exact same way. Just make sure you're using the same wires as we do. But what's great is that wiring this thing up is super, super easy. So we're going to use the exact same pins as we did before, except this time we're going to use a little mini breadboard in the front of the robot. But the pins are going to go to the exact same place. So we're going to start with a VCC. I'm going to take the VCC pin and plug it straight into 5 volts. Next, the GND pin. I'll plug that into ground. On to TX. And so TX, right here, it's going to go to D2. And RX is going to go to D3. When you're plugging in the Bluetooth module, uh, be sure to use the uh, front half of the breadboard right here, but be sure to wire directly behind it. If you put your wires back here on the back half of the breadboard, there won't be any connection because the uh, pins are not connected across this little bridge. So now that we have the whole thing wired up, let's go test it out. All right, let's try this sucker out. Forward, right. Left and backwards. Looks like everything is working the way it should. And we have Bluetooth communication for our robot. Uh, well, hey guys, that's all we have for today. I hope you guys had so much fun learning how to add Bluetooth to your projects. Uh, and keep in mind, uh, you can alter this code to control anything you want. You know, um, anything you can hook up to the Arduino, you can modify to control wirelessly using Bluetooth. Um, if you, uh, if you had fun watching this, uh, keep your eye out for some of our other tutorials. We've got some stuff with the ESP32 coming, as well as some bigger, crazier robots. Um, so as always, thank you so much for watching. And remember, anyone can build robots.